The Jack Benny Program, transcribed, presented by Lucky Strike. <laughs> Friends, every time you light up a Lucky, you get more real deep down smoking enjoyment. Yes, that's exactly what you get from every Lucky you light. For to make certain that Luckies are a smoother, lighter, more deeply enjoyable smoke, Luckies pay more for fine tobacco, millions of dollars more than official parity prices. Remember, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSMFT, Lucky Strike means fine tobacco. Fine tobacco that guarantees a milder, truly finer cigarette for you. Yes, from first puff to last, there's never a rough puff in a Lucky. So for your own real deep-down smoking enjoyment, smoke that smoke of fine tobacco Lucky Strike. The Lucky Strike program starring Jack Benny with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Rochester, Dennis Day, the Sportsman Quartet, and yours truly, Don Wilson. Gentlemen, let's go out to Beverly Hills. It's morning, and hundreds of people, brimming with the Christmas spirit, are waiting for the local department store to open its doors. Oh, Mary. Mary, where are you? Here I am, Jack, right behind you. Oh, yeah. Say, hey, Mary, how'd you like the way I wiggled myself through this crowd, right up to the front of the line? Yeah. Those rumble lessons you took from Arthur Murray really helped. I'll say. When we started, we were way at the end, and now there's only one man ahead of me. Hello, Jack. Hello, Mr. Murray. <laughs> Oh, look, look, Mary, they're getting ready to open the store and let the crowd in. I can see the manager walking over to the floor walker. Jasper, what is it, Mr. Simpkins? It's almost time to open the store. Are all the clerks at their station? Yes, sir. Good. You will open the doors in ten seconds. Are you ready for final inspection? Yes, sir. Hair? Calm. Chin? Out. Jacket? Pressed? Carnation? Moist. Good. <laughs> It is now nine o'clock. You may open the doors and guide our customers into the store. Yes, sir. Mule train! Get out! Get out! Mule train! Get in there! Get in there! Get in there! Get out of there! Come on! Mule train! Get out! Get out! Mule train? Jasper. Jasper, how could you do a thing like that to our customers? When I saw those faces, I couldn't control myself. <laughs> Wait here, Mary. I'll be right back. Jack, don't get into it. Never mind. Say, mister, are you the manager? Uh, yes, I am. Well, as one of your steady customers, I resent being ushered into the store like a mule. I apologize, sir. I've never been... I so... said, I apologize. Put your ears down. <laughs> Now, look, Miss. Jack, I told you not to get into it. Come on. Oh, all right. Jack, I'd like to go to a store with you just once where you don't get into an argument with everybody. Look, Mary, I'll admit that sometimes it may be my fault, but not this time. Imagine driving customers into a store yelling mule train. Well, don't stand there complaining. Go have your coat fixed. My coat? His whip tore your sleeve off. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I'll just pin it and then fix it when I get home. Come on. Mary, what do you think I ought to get for my sister Florence in Chicago? Oh, I don't know. It ought to be something nice. You know, Mary, I have no brothers and no other sister. Florence is my only close relative. I ought to get her something really nice. Uh, what'd you get her last year? A pencil sharpener. <laughs> oh, how sweet, Jack. But then she is your only sister. Yeah. <laughs> After all, you know... Jack, let's go outside and come in the store again. Why? I want that guy with the whip to get another crack at you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing doing. He had his chance. Anyway, I can't understand a store like this bringing customers in just the way... Hey, they... pardon me, mister. Did you see my wife? Huh? Are you talking to me? Yeah. Did you see my wife? No, I haven't. As a matter of fact, I don't even know your wife. Then how do you know you didn't see her? <laughs> Now, mister, how would I know... I can't stand here jabbering. I better go look for her. Chloe! 
Now, oh, come on, Mary. Let's oh, go. Oh, Jack, look. There's Dennis. Where? Oh, yes. Yeah. Young man, what can I do for you? Gee, I don't know what to get for my mother. She goes horseback riding a lot. Maybe she'd like it if I buy something for the horse. The same, mister. Yes? How much is that horse collar? Horse collar? Yes, that white one hanging up there on the wall. Young man, this is a plumbing department. <laughs> Just what is it you're looking for? Oh, I don't know, but I'd like to get something for my mother. Well, I can call the ladies' department and save you some time. Did you have anything in mind? Oh, yes, sir. I think a dress would be nice. Oh, that's an excellent idea. What size dress does your mother wear? 36. 36? Uh-huh. I think I ought to get her a nightgown, too. Size 58. <laughs> now, wait a minute, son. If your mother wears a 36 dress, why would she wear a 58 nightgown? She doesn't sleep in her girdle. <laughs> Young man, young man, I think you're a little confused. However, I will admit there is a little variation in size, but very slight. Gee, I hope that movie company doesn't find out. Movie company? Yeah, they want my mother to take off her girdle to advertise their new picture. What picture? Lost Boundaries. <laughs> young man, would you do me a favor and shoplift something so I can have you arrested? What? Yeah, let it go. Is there anything else I can do for you? Uh-huh. Those men's shirts and that cape across the aisle, are they real silk? Oh, yes, they are. They'd make a wonderful gift for your father. Oh, they're not for my father. I'd like to buy them for Jack Benny. Jack Benny? Do you know him? Oh, sure. He's on one of my shows. <laughs> Dennis! Dennis! Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Hello, Mary. Hello, Dennis. Doing your Christmas shopping? Yeah. Gee, I was just going to decide on Mr. Benny's gift, and he had to walk up and spoil the whole thing. Oh, I'm sorry, kid. I, I didn't know you wanted to be a secret. Yeah. Now you'll have to close your eyes. Okay. Got them closed? Uh-huh. Okay, mister, you can wrap it up now and put it in a shoebox so he won't know it's a shirt. <laughs> can I open my eyes now? Yeah. Gee, that was a close one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, say, Mr. Benny, while my packages are being gift-wrapped, would you like to step over to the music counter and hear a record I just made? Oh, sure, kid. Come on. Oh, miss? Yes? Do you have the latest record made by Dennis Day? You mean I must have done something wonderful? Yeah, that's the one. Uh, would you play it, miss? I'm sorry, but our record player is broken. Broken? Yeah, all day yesterday, every five minutes, some curly-headed jerk kept requesting, that's what I like about the South. <laughs> I think I know who you mean. Uh, why didn't you tell him that you refused to play it? And get hit with a ham hock? <laughs> oh, yes, he's never without one. Gee, and I wanted you to hear my record. Well, if it'll make you feel better, Dennis, you sing and I'll spin you around. Eh? Okay. Okay, come on. Know 
why you love me so. I only know you do. Darling, I must have done something wonderful to be blessed. Dennis, I bet it's a swell record. Say, Mary, don't you think that song will be a... Mary? Now, where did Mary go? Well, she's way over there at the end of the counter. Oh, yeah. May I uh, wait on you, miss? Yes, uh, I'd like to get something for a gentleman. A gentleman? Your uh, husband? Uh, no, my boss. He's been nice to me, and I'd like to show my appreciation. Oh, here's something nice. A gold tie class. A gold tie class? No. Well, how about a gold keychain? No. How about gold cufflinks? Look, mister, I don't want to get him anything. He can melt down. (laughs) Gee, I wish I could think of something. Well, miss, perhaps I could help you better if you told me how closely you two are associated. Are, uh, are you engaged? Uh, No, we're not. Is he your boyfriend? No, as a matter of fact, he treats me more like a sister. How about a pencil sharpener? A pencil sharpener? Yes, we ship one to Chicago every year. It goes to a girl named Flossie. Uh, You mean Florence? Well, I feel like I know her. (laughs) Hey, Mary. Mary, let's not keep losing each other. I spend more... Oh, hello, Mr. Benny. Oh, hello, hello. It's uh, on the way to Chicago. (laughs) Wait a minute. This year, I was going to get my sister something different. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> Come on, Mary, let's go You know, it's amazing how everybody knows I'm a comedian <laughs> Mary, I'm going to get something else for my sister Now, is there anything else, sir? Well, I don't know, baby uh, Let's see what I bought so far Well, there's one black negligee Yeah <laughs> That's for my ever-loving wife. Oh, you... You're married? Am I married? Why, I'm married to Alice Faye, the sweetest <laughs> little gal who ever... Oh, come on now, baby, stop crying. There ain't enough of me for everybody. <laughs> yes, sir. Happens every time. <laughs> Now, let's see, honey. I've got everybody's present except one for Jackson. Oh, I know. I'll I'll get him a pair of socks. What size? Uh, Eleven and a half. These? Yeah. Now, I'll just take off my shoes, put the new ones on, and then I'll be all... Mr. Harris, I thought you were going to give socks to Mr. Benny. I am. Here are my old ones. Gift wrap them. (laughs) Don't you want me to sew up the holes first? No, no, no. Just throw in a needle and thread. And give the old man something to do when he gets home from his rumble lesson. <laughs> yeah, put plenty of ribbon on the box so the kid can oh, play around. Hey, Phil. Well, dear hearts and gentle people. <laughs> it's funny running into you, Phil. Yeah, how's Alice? Now stop it. <laughs> What's the matter with her? Usual thing. She's upset because she found out I'm married. Oh, now that's ridiculous. You cried a little too, Dad. <laughs> But that was during the ceremony. It had nothing to do with you. Well, then why'd you cry? Because you wouldn't let him go on the honeymoon. <laughs> Mary, stop. I've seen that. Now, Jackson, I've got to finish my shopping, kids. Look, I've got to get some uh, California pennants. 
California pennants? Yeah, you see, I'm going to the Rose Bowl game, and I want to cheer for California, but all they got in this store are pennants from Syracuse. Pennants from Syracuse? Sure, there's a big box of them right up there on the counter. See what it says? Syracuse pennants. That circus peanut. <laughs> Syracuse pennant. Phil, how can you be... He disappeared in the crowd. Good, good. Now, Mary, I wish you'd help me decide on something for my sister, Flora. Well, Jack, I've been trying to think. Gosh, I don't know. Hey, mister, are you sure you didn't see my wife? Uh, look, buddy, I'd like to help you, but I don't know what your wife looks like. Has she got any identifying marks? Well, she's got a birthmark on... Never mind, I'll look for her myself. <laughs> yes, yes, you better. Hello! Come on, Mary. Why does everybody have to pick on me? Well, have you made up your mind, sir? Huh? Oh, oh, I was just looking around. I sure would like to give my girl a ring like that. Well, I don't blame you. That's a beautiful diamond ring. Uh, how much is it? $4,000. That doesn't sound so bad. But wait till I look at my bank book. Mm. Well? But wait till I turn the page. <laughs> Hmm. Well? Uh, wait till I turn another page. Hmm. Well? Uh, just a minute, I'm on the last page. Well, what's on the last page? Put something in the pot, boy. <laughs> <laughs> well, look, mister, if you want to buy this ring, you don't have to pay the $4,000 cash. You can pay for it on easy terms. All you have to do is establish credit rating. Uh, credit rating? Yes, I have the forms right here. Your name? Uh, Rochester Van Jones. Are you employed? Yes, sir. Who do you work for? Jack Benny. Oh, what are your duties? You with mean you, you want to go on? <laughs> <laughs> Why, yes. What are your duties with Mr. Benny? Well, besides being his rumble partner, I'm his personal <laughs> secretary, legal advisor, attorney at law, and I also select the scripts for the movies he makes. You pick his movies. He has to blame somebody. <laughs> well, I don't agree with you. I think that Mr. Benny is a great entertainer, whether it's stage, screen, or radio. And as far as I'm concerned, his last picture was one of the funniest I've ever seen. You keep talking like that, and you'll be in line for a pencil sharpener. <laughs> Jack, I think Rochester's is over there picking out a gift for you. Yeah, I guess so. I don't want to see him see me, so let's move on. Oh, Jack! Jack! Hey, it's Don. Hello, Don. Why, hello, Mary. Oh, say, Jack, I just bought you a present, but I felt it was silly to wait until Christmas, so I'm going to give it to you now. Here. For me? A mop? But, Don, what can I do with a mop? This isn't a mop. I just put a handle on it so you wouldn't be embarrassed carrying it home. <laughs> I thought the widow's peak was so you could get into the corner. <laughs> John, John, what have you got in that little bag? Oh, Mary, I'm glad you asked me. Here, here, I'll show it to you. It's the cutest thing you ever saw. What is it, Don? Well, see, it's a little toy merry-go-round. Well, what do you want that for? Well, now, here, let me show you. First you wind it up, and then you release the lever, and it spins around and plays music. Really? See how it works, Don. Okay. Everybody knows they're round and firm and fully. Yes, yeah. fully, fully, yes, fully, fully. Everybody knows they're round and firm and fully. Yes, fully, fully, yes, fully, fully. 
everybody knows they're free and easy on the dog. They're free and easy, they're so free and easy, don't you think it's time to start out with a cart? If you'll take the time to try one, we're sure you'll buy so. <laughs> Down, Down, what's the matter? Well, here, here, I, I better wind it up again. It's a shame it broke. Oh, that's all right. I'll get another one. Well, I've got to run along now. See you kids later. Bye, Don. So long, Don. Now, Mary, I don't want to be here all day. I'm going to get that other present for my sister. Let's go over to the perfume counter. Well, Jack, I've got some other shopping to do, so I'll meet you there later. All right, Mary. Don't be too long. <laughs> yeah, I wonder what kind of perfume I ought to get. Oh, there you are. What? Where is she? <laughs> Oh, for heaven's sake. Why do you keep asking me about your wife? I told you I don't know what she looks like. Well, here. I'll show you a picture of her. See? This? <laughs> this is your wife? Yep. <laughs> Seems silly of me to keep looking for her, don't it? <laughs> I don't know. Anyway, miss, she must be in the store someplace, so just keep looking and you'll probably find her. I hope not. <laughs> Hello, Rube. Rube? I'd like to get out of here so I can stop running into such silly... Oh, here's a perfume counter. Must be something nice here for my sister. Oh, clerk. Clerk. Uh, what can I do for you? <laughs> hmm. Are you the salesman here? Yeah. You're the salesman here? In the perfume department? Don't take my word for it. Smell me. <laughs> I'll, I'll take your word for it. Thank you. Yeah. Now, what kind of perfume would you like to buy? Well, what kind have you got? I've got taboo, temptation, shocking, white shoulders, surrender, and you should excuse the expression, my sin. Wait a minute. I think, I think my sister likes taboo, but I don't know whether to get it for her or not. <laughs> taboo or not taboo, that is the question. <laughs> hmm. I made that up myself. <laughs> I know, I know. Yeah. Everybody says I'm another Milton Boyle. <laughs> well, your your face. Your... <laughs> Your face does look a little like a kinescope. <laughs> now, let's, uh, let's see some other perfumes, please. Okay. We have some very nice imported ones. Evening in Paris. Uh-huh. Midnight in Madrid. Uh-huh. Here's a domestic one. Morning in the smog. <laughs> oh, are they, are they bottling it now? Why not? We got enough of it. <laughs> Yes, yes. Oh, there you are, Jack. Yeah, I thought I'd stop here and get some perfume for Florence. Clerk, what's that? Oh, this is a very fashionable odor. It's called Eau Jude Oui. I'll spray a little on you. Say, that does smell nice. Yeah. And it's got penicillin in it to fight off virus X. <laughs> 
not a bad idea, you know. You Say, Jack, here's a perfume your sister Florence might like. L'eau de la vie crayon. L'eau de la vie crayon. What does that mean? Aroma of freshly sharpened pencil. <laughs> Oh, you're no help. Imagine putting a clerk like you behind a perfume counter. Oh, this ain't my regular job. I just sell perfume during the Christmas rush. I thought so. What is your regular job? I'm a goose girl at Hollywood Park. <laughs> oh, come on, Mary. I've had enough of this guy. Hey, what's that? Well, we've been here all day, and it's closing time. You mean they're closing the store now? Yes. Jack, look out! You train! Get out of here! Everybody else! Get out of here! Gentlemen, care food packages have been improved and increased with more meats and fats that mean health to hungry children and families overseas. Twenty-two and one-half pounds of life-giving food for ten dollars. Delivery guaranteed. Send your contribution to nonprofit care, Los Angeles or New York. That's C-A-R-E, care, Los Angeles or New York. Jack, we'll be back in just a moment, but first... Six, seven, 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 seven. When Lucky Strike goes to the tobacco markets, they have you in mind. Your deep-down enjoyment of smoking. And that's a big reason why they pay more for fine tobacco. Yes, friends, at the tobacco auctions, Lucky Strike pays millions of dollars, more than official parity prices, for fine, light, naturally mild tobacco. You see, in a cigarette, it's the tobacco that counts. And LSNFT, Lucky Strike, means fine tobacco. You'll know this is true with every Lucky you like. For here's smoking at its finest. Smooth, mellow, deeply enjoyable. There's never a rough puff in a Lucky. And like you, the veteran tobacco men choose Lucky Strike for their own personal enjoyment. In fact, a recent survey reveals that more independent tobacco experts, buyers and warehousemen smoke Lucky Strike regularly than the next two leading brands combined. So take a tip from the experts and smoke that smoke of fine tobacco, Lucky Strike. And here's a Christmas gift suggestion that every friend will welcome. A specially wrapped Christmas carton of Lucky Strike cigarettes. Ten packs, 200 cigarettes. 200 wonderfully smooth, deeply enjoyable Luckies. Yes, give Lucky Strike Christmas cartons to your friends. And keep a good supply of Luckies on hand to add to your enjoyment of the Christmas season. See, Mary, this Christmas rush is awful, isn't it? Yes. See, look how crowded this bus is. Hey, Ruth! Ruth! Huh? How are you? Oh, it's you. I'm fine, fine. Did you ever find your wife? Who do you think is driving the bus? <laughs> oh, well, tell Chloe to let me off at the next corner. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, next Sunday, two hours before my own show on the same network, the Actors' Company will present The Man Who Came to Dinner with Charles Boyer, Mel Farrar, Henry Fonda, John Garfield... Gene Kelly, Dorothy McGuire, Gregory Peck, Rosalind Russell, and yours truly, Jack Benny. I'm sure you'll enjoy the show. And another thing, ladies and gentlemen, the next time we meet, it will be Christmas Day. So on behalf of my sponsor, my cast, and my entire staff, I want to take this opportunity to wish each and every one of you a happy and joyous holiday season. Dennis Day and a day in the life of Dennis Day. Stay tuned for the Amos and Andy show, which follows immediately. <laughs> Transcribed 
This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.